The fact of the matter is, whether you've been in network marketing for years or just a few days, your family and friends have seen your opportunity and your phone is, as we call it, burnt. If you're anything like me, that's a scary thought. So the big question is, how do entrepreneurs like us, who love the network marketing profession, who no longer want to be that guy and are tired of convincing people during uncomfortable let's get coffee meetings where they say, what's this all about? How do we market in a way that aligns us with our dream clients and expands our network of upfront and transparent professionals, allowing us to get our time back, our families back, and gain a real passive asset? People like us who value impact over income, we deserve to see our visions once and for all. Join me in this podcast where we'll uncover just how to do that. My name is Eric Sablon. Welcome to Burnt Phone Marketing. What's going on, guys? Eric Sablon here with Burnt Phone Marketing. And do I have a treat for you today? I'm, you know... You know, when, you, when you're online and you just keep working and you just keep finding those right people and you keep finding those right people. And we keep saying, you know, you always got to be adding two a day, two a day, two a day. But the problem with most network marketers is they're adding two, and I hate to say it like this, two scrubs a day, two scrubs a day, two scrubs a day. But when you find those gems, when you find those diamonds in the rough, you latch onto them and you figure out who they are. And luckily, luckily this time I was scouring through the internet and I this fell into my lap. So I'm just going to talk a little about her. Jen is a partner in P2 Design. She's a graphic artist, social media business coach. She's a badass digital marketer and she says it and she does it. Um, she's the founder and the creator of the Secret Society of Entre Entrepreneurs Who Automate. Automate. She's a Philly girl and um, she's a network marketing professional. So obviously we're talking to the right person and she's an expert in what she does. So please welcome Jen Powers to the show. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited. And let's just kind of jump in really, really quick, like boom, boom, fast. Let's go. Tell, <laughs> tell the audience a little bit about, you know, who you are, what you do, and why you could help like an entrepreneur and a network marketer in what you do. In so, okay. Um, well, Philly girl born and raised, as you said, I'm a single mom. I have a almost 10 year old little boy at the time of this recording or our show. And, um, I, I stumbled, I, I guess I was always entrepreneurial ever since, you know, selling lemonade as a little kid and then always making crafts and selling them to people at the swim club and whatever, and all this stuff. And, and I, I guess the world of digital marketing, um, online business ownership that, that kind of started for me back in 2014. And, I graduated, like you said, my background is web design, graphic design. So when I graduated college and I got my first job, very quickly realized the corporate world is not for me <laughs> at all. I do not like listening to directions or being bossed around and told what to do and when to do it. And so quickly was like, no. Um, so 2014 though, I had, um, I was already a mom at that point. And I, my son was about three, three and a half, something like that. And I stumbled into the world of MLM or network marketing. And it was very much by chance. I did not know anything. Of, I really was clueless, honest to God. Like I, I know some people come in with like preconceived notions and all, I had no idea. Um, deer in the headlights, no clue. Um, but I quickly, real, I mean, very, very had success fairly quickly um, and fell in love with it, you know, but, but during that whole process, it just, the biggest thing that kept coming up for me is being able to not only like design what I want my days to look like and my life to look like and have the lifestyle I want, but going through a divorce and, and going through life changes and this and that being present and being able to um, really call it the shots of your own life and, and make your own money and that empowering feeling. It was like a high for me. So I was pat so passionate about helping other people have that and also creating memories and being with those that you love and living whatever, whatever you want your day to look like. And so I, I was passionate about that. So I, um, through the whole MLM network marketing experience, there's a lot that I did not like. There's a lot, well, most that I loved, but there was a lot of issues that I had with mm -hmm. the industry as a whole. Um, and so I became obsessed with trying to correct or be a part of the change for good, because I do believe in this industry so much. And I think it's one of the most, I mean, I think it's crazy that not everybody is in it. Cause I just, I, I do love it. Um, but so, yeah, what I, what I, I think your question was, how can I, how do I help entrepreneurs? I, I think that my special sauce or my secret 
to success or how I impact people the most is um, through automation and through modern marketing. So my background in corporate America was the head of a social media department of an internet marketing company, believe it or not. Um, and I'm growing up with the birth of Facebook, like all of that, that's just my world. Right. And like, and some people can relate to that. I'm sure listening to this and, um, they, you know, they did too as well. So I, I think that my, you know, uniqueness or whatever you want to call it is I don't teach, and I don't, I don't, I don't share with other people just like the regular generic, this is how you market online. I became really, really obsessed with modern marketing and always staying ahead, 10 steps ahead, because as you and I both know, the internet is always changing and everything is always constantly in motion and changing all the time. So um, yeah, teaching, teaching MLMers, teaching the world that we're both in just a new way to do this. Um, not, not so much old school. And I hope no one takes offense to that, but I'll say this, not tradition, non-traditional, not that I don't focus on the traditional ways. I do the non-traditional ways. Um, and I love it. And, and people, it's really cool when you get to help people have results in a way that they were not taught anywhere before. And it's just, it gives them their time back. So I just said to you, right, you know, a second ago, so we're not glued on our phones all the time that our time is spent however we want it to be. Cause I think a lot of the times as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, it's great and it's freedom, but sometimes it's, it can be dangerous where you get so sucked into it and you forget that the whole point in the, the beginning of all this was to have freedom. Right? So, right. so um, yeah, I think that kind of answered your question. I hope I did. that totally did. So I love what you said, modern marketing. Yeah. Guys, if you're taking notes, write that down and design that for yourself, like modern marketing, like totally different from what everybody else is doing. And the also thing, thing that, that I saw is one, one phrase that I always like to say is be present in the presence. And because you have a, you know, a, a young boy and you want, you know, you don't want to be glued to your phone and you don't want to be that person. The problem, the problem with a lot of us entrepreneurs, like we just want to like, our validation is we're so busy. Like we're so busy. <laughs> like it's like our value. I wish I had 24 more hours in a day. And it's like, so what are you going to do? Like, just, you know what I mean? And yep. I just, one thing that I, I would always share with the audience, you know, I have seven boys and just be present in the presence because you're never going to get those times back. And I look back and I, I commend you for being a single mom, but I look back and my boys, you know, they played football and I was at every single game. I never missed a game. My dad told me never miss a game, never miss a practice. And I never missed a game, never missed a practice. And uh, I was lucky. Um, but I, I'd say that like, one of the best feelings that a kid can have, because I had it, is to actually look out in the stands and see your dad and your mom and your family there. So as an entrepreneur, do me a favor, guys. Go out there and be present with the people that you say you're working for. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just very important. And I, love, and I love what you said. You brought that full circle. Like, don't be on your phone all the time. And uh, yeah, and the entre entrepreneur bug, once you hit it, once you get it, once you get bitten by it, it's game over. Yes, game totally. Over. <laughs> You're so right. And yeah, with the I, skill set that you have, it's like, boom, home run. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it, and it is, it becomes like an obsession and you tell yourself, you know, well, this is a good obsession, right? This is something like I, I'm trying to empower other people, empower myself, go out there, make make great money and and feel freedom, financial freedom, time freedom, all the things but you can get so sucked in and it's like, yikes, man. Like you're forgetting why you started. You just, mm -hmm. and you always have to bring it, always come back to that. So, and, and like you said, I similar, I do not miss anything of my sons. I mean, I, unlike you, I only have one, so it's a little bit easier, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I refused. I grew up with parents that were always fully present and, and, you know, back then, right. They weren't, there was no social media. There was like, you know, cell phones, but it was totally a different world. So now you know, it's, it's an amazing tool. It's a tool that I absolutely love. I've built businesses. I mean, I teach that. I mean, we both do, right. Everybody listening is on the understand social media, but it's, it can be, you know, if you're not too careful with it, um, it can suck everything out of you. And before you blink your eyes and your kids are married and you're like, well, okay, yeah. <laughs> I missed it all. Right. I missed it all. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you talked about, um, the new way and the old way or the old guard and the new guard. So what would you what would you say to um, you know a guy that's been I wouldn't say u uber successful he's been successful building the older way mm -hmm. um, when I say the older way like you know belly to belly and yeah. all all of that what is your like overall 
because a lot of times they don't want to change because like this worked, this worked, this worked. What would you what would you share with someone who's like like an upline or a sideline or or someone that you're working with? Like this is why we want to use social. This is why we want to use the internet. This is why I think that this would work old school and new school. What, what, how do you, how do you explain to someone like the blend? Okay. So I love that. That's such a good question. And I, I very recently just shared with um, at my upline actually, and um, other people, just friends in the industry um, because people are very resistant to change. Nobody likes it yet. It's, that's the only thing that's ever, you know, it's constant all the time. So here's what I say. I, I, and in, in my podcast too, like sometimes I, I, I'm a little rough around the edges. It's the Philly, the hood girl in me. Right. And I'm like, kind of, you know, I shoot, I'm a straight shooter, like you said, and I'm, I kind of rip it apart a little bit. Like I, I dig in there and like the issues that I have with the old school or the traditional way, the reality is those are life skills. Okay. I am not, when I bash it and mess up, you know, I like poke fun at it. I really don't, um, I, I, there's still so much value there. Okay. There, there really is like contact, whatever your, you know, plan is, which for most people, I would say in general, it's you contact people, you reach out to people, you invite them to take a look at something, you show them what it is you got, you follow up with them. Like, okay, those are very important skills with whatever business you're in MLM or not, you know, that's, Mm -hmm. they're really good. Right. And rejection's a part of life. So getting, you just like get a thicker skin and getting your communication skills you know, leveling those up. I do, there is value there. Um, so I don't, I don't say to anybody, um, that what I teach and what I, what I'm passionate about sharing with people in this modern marketing, I don't say that to completely replace, you know, the traditional ways, the way I look at it. And the way I explain this to people is you, the traditional way is like a bachelor's degree. If you want to, now you can stay there and you can be wildly successful, literally top earners. You, I mean, you can go all the way with that. Um, or you can go for your master's or your PhD and you can learn modern advanced technology that frees up more of your time that helps you you know get more of your time back. Both ways, a blend of them, solely one or the other, it all works, right? And the way that I explain this is you can do it old school and you can do it traditional and you will you absolutely if you're relentless and you're you're you have a lot of time that you can dedicate and you can absolutely get to the top. My question is if I had a Toyota or a Ferrari which one's going to go faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that success loves speed. And I mean, I don't know a person in the world that starts a business that isn't like hungry for that success quickly. Now, obviously we learn patience and resilience as entrepreneurs. And we know that it's not, there is no overnight successes. We know, and we understand that, but the, the way that I would say this to somebody, so you said, you know, what, if somebody is like, no, I I'm good with old school. I'm doing it traditional. I don't, I'm an old dog. Don't teach me new tricks. I don't want to know it. I would say that if they're in their ways and that's, that's fine. I'm trying to work with people that are like, you know what? I see value in that. I've had success in that, but I'm hungry to learn new skills. I want to increase like my tool belt. Like I, I want to learn some new skills to advance me, maybe get me there a little quicker. And to the people that are resistant, I say, I, I share the Ferrari analogy and I'm like, look, if you can keep rocking and rolling and doing what you're doing, but I would challenge you as an entrepreneur to always continue to learn, right? We, we are huge with personal development and professional development and growing. And so the, the biggest issue that people have with automation and bots and funnels and doing things really modern, so modern social media, they think that it's going to be incredibly overwhelming mm-hmm. and they're not, you know, all the excuses, right? I'm, I don't know tech. I don't know this. I don't know that. And I'm like, you didn't know anything at one point and you learned it. So it's really, and it's not, it's not hard. It's just new. I always say that all the time. It's not hard. It's new. It's, you know, a baby doesn't know how to walk right away. And then they start to walk and then they start to run and it's hard, but that's, and that's a whole nother hard. This is not hard. This is actually just new and you just have to be open to learning. So I don't know. That's, that's my passion about that. And I just think when people, they, they, they have so many judgments or preconceived notions of what something's going to be like, but you really don't know that unless you just, you know, dive in. So, and I like to break it down really bite size and easy for people because I do know there's a lot of information out there and I understand the, you know, the hesitation to dive into something that's, it sounds, oh my God, so techie and ah, but it's, but it's not when you have a good teacher and you have somebody that can really chunk it down for you and make it manageable. And it's, it's, so that's what I love to do. That's what I, how I like to teach it. That, 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 that's it. I mean, and, and one thing that, that I would say is like when you break it down into small chunks, 
you and and give them like a, a almost a value ladder. We're talking like techno battle, yeah. but like a value ladder. Here's you're there, you're there, you're there, you're there. If you give them small chunks and small wins, I think that most people, you know, go to first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade. You you're just giving them small wins, and I, I think that that is a great way to teach. And I'm sure which. Brings me to my next question. You have something that's releasing pretty soon. Like, I know that you're, I don't mean to like put it on you, but you have something yeah. that's releasing pretty soon. You've been going through mentorship. You've had the success. You've had the, you know, you have the businesses. So you're launching a coaching program. So tell me a little bit about the, tell me a little bit about your, you don't have to give me the name, but tell me a little bit about like the premise of your coaching program and who it's for and, and, and who it, what, what, what results they're going to get. So I, I, there's so many different ways to, um, you know, as you know, like package together or build a coaching program. I, I, when I think of like a year long program or something to me personally, like, I'm like, Oh my God, that seems like it's going to be so much. And so, so I work better in shorter chunks of time, whether it's 90 days or, you know, something like that. So that's the way it's going to be, um, built, I guess you could call it. And, and so what I realized was, and you can totally understand this, there is so much that, you know, and you don't even realize how much, you know, until other people are like, Oh my God, I did not know that at all. And so all these things kept coming up for me. And I was working, like I just said to you, uh, not that long ago, like with a lot of different one-on-one clients. And I, the one thing that MLM has, that's great is everybody wants to be a part of something. They want to belong to something. There's that sense of like community. And so doing a coaching program to not only give somebody that community of like high achievers, people that are hungry and ambitious. Um, I I'm excited to give them that this program is soup to nuts, everything from basic fundamentals of like, Hey, yeah, we all know Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, all these things. Right. But how do you actually use them for business? Because believe I I'm shocked all the time seeing so many people in the industry <laughs> that are really like, like not leveraging these free tools to their max potential. And it's just the name of the game. And what I'm passionate is helping people create and generate a set, a steady stream of high quality leads, right? Cause you don't have a business if you do not have leads. And the thing that the industry really doesn't hit on is it's, it's more like a hunter's game and you're hunting people down as opposed to attracting and being that magnet. So this program is designed for that. It's to take you through, okay, let's the free tools that are out there. Let's make sure they're all completely optimized for success. They're set up the right way. We're going to create, you're going to become this lead magnet for these high quality ideal avatars. Okay. We're going to identify who your avatar is. We go into, cause it's not just important to know, like this transformation, this A to B transformation of this ideal person that you want to take through um, and, and get this certain result for. It's You have to also know when you identify who they are, where are they hanging out online, right? Because if I'm hanging on Facebook and my avatar is over on TikTok and she like, that's, well, I'm wasting my time and I'm not, you know, so I go into the psychology there and like understanding of all that all the way through, let's like, let's automate a lot of the processes instead of you having to constantly be, it's a one man show, one woman show where I'm doing everything. There's so many things that people are unaware of that um, don't even work. Some are, some are free tools, right? Some are things that are not even going to cost you anything and it's going to save you boatloads of time. So in this program and my intention for it and my desire is to take somebody a to B like the transformation being, Hey, I've had some success. I want to have much more success and I want to get there quicker. And I also want, um, you know, somebody who, again, who's, who's open-minded, who wants to learn some new skills. So in the beginning, they're great. They're having success. They're rocking and rolling by the end. It's like an entire system, you know, around your personal brand and whatever it is that you sell product, good service opportunity, whatever it is. So, um, the other thing that I, that I definitely, I'm so passionate about that's in this course is creating this super sexy, irresistible offer. Cause I don't think a lot of people, um, understand the, the leverage and power of MLM and the products and the opportunity that we have. You are like everybody else, like everybody in your business is your competition. So even upline, downline, side, like cross line, guess what? Newsflash, you're all selling the same thing. So how do we, how do we take something that we all already know and love and we're all talking about it? And how can I make it unique to just me? Like how, why would somebody go to Jen instead of, you know, Eric, why, why, why would they do that? If you can't answer that question. So I get really deep into that. So, um, by the end of it all, you know, these people have these sexy offers, they have things automated, they have an entire system built around 
what it is that they're already doing and they get more of their darn time back, which is my biggest goal for everybody so that they can go do whatever the heck they want with it, <laughs> you know, not be a slave to your business. Cause if you're not running your business, your business is running you. And I see it too many times where, you know, people in this industry become so obsessed with it. And I get it. Cause like, I've been there. I, I totally get it. Um, but you have to be careful and, and then you blink and it's three years later and you really haven't made a dent. You haven't made that much more impact or income yet. You're spinning your wheels and you're always busy. Like we just said, like the busy badge of honor. I hate that. Okay. I I'm trying, you can, I don't know if you can tell, I'm trying to like not curse right now because that's like naturally me. So I don't know if this is okay. <laughs> it's but, working. It's working. You're but, good. but you know, that's, but that's, so that's the whole point. I know that was a very long winded way of explaining it, but I, I just want people to know that this industry is freaking awesome. And there's, but there's so many different unique ways to spin it and make it unique to you, the individual who is the brand partner, representative, what, whatever you want to call yourself. And, um, that's, that's what gets me excited. I think just seeing each and every single individual finding their own and coming out with their own and having their own brand, their own voice, their own way of sharing the offers that we create and help them create. Um, and that's what, yeah, that's what gets me most excited about it. So. Wow. Like we're in the same thing because that I'm the offer guy inside the, inside our group. Nice. And I always say this is like, how do you differentiate yourself from the sea of sameness? Like Absolutely. You and your upline and your sideline are exactly the same. So yes. package something in front, the side, in, in back, whatever it is that's going to give you the edge over the seven figure earner that is over here that they just join just because they join. Now, the, the downside of that is like, well, the seven figure earner is not going to have the time. Yeah, but he's got some systems. I guarantee you he's got some systems that they're going to plug into and it might be plug and play. So you need to deliver something like that, which that that's huge. Like that, yeah. that's amazing to, to give them that super sexy core offer that differentiates them from the sea of sameness. Like I Yeah. Like. And I think, and, and if, and if nothing else, what I have seen from the people I've worked with, it's incredible just to see the personal transformation of this person going from like, it's like this massive boost of confidence because they're like, Oh wait, now it really feels like I actually have ownership over something and I have control over this. And it's not like, I'm not like everybody else. And I actually am pretty darn unique. And I do have these cool, like special gifts and talents and personal brand things that other people don't have. So I think I, that might, that might be one of my favorite parts is to see all the light bulbs go off and go, like, you know what? Yes. MLM is an amazing vehicle but that is what it is. It's a vehicle. It's not like the end all be all. It's not your entire identity. You don't lose yourself in it. You're leveraging it. And it's smart to do that, right? You didn't have to create the product and it's already all of that hard stuff is done, but like they, they don't, there's no deep dive into real understanding of real marketing, right? Because it's like network selling half the time, right? Everybody's like, all right, like, uh, uh, let me just pitch you what I got. And it's like, no, let's teach real marketing. And also let's add a whole nother layer and le like layer to what this opportunity and these products have by putting Jen's special touch on it and Jen's sexy offer around it and all these things. So it's funny because people really are so their eyes get so wide and like open bright because they didn't even think of this, right? Like you and I, I mean, we know it. Um, but it's very cool when people are like, Oh my God, I didn't even realize I could do that. Like, that's a really great idea. So, so yeah, it's neat. the light bulb comes on and they're like, and the, the best part about that, and I've seen it happen before. The best part about that is like, all of a sudden, they're a business. Yeah, and exactly. They, they, they realize that they're, they realize that they're not whatever they're representing. Yes. They, they realize that like, I am the business. Like that's the difference. Like you, you're a glorified salesperson mm -hmm. if you don't create a separate offer. If you don't 100%. sell you and create what, what makes you the thing, the reason, then you're just a glorified salesperson and you're just going to move a bunch of product or service or whatever it is. And you don't differentiate yourself at all. So yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's awesome. So uh, I'm going to jump right back in. So you talked about the special, uh, you talked about your program, you talked about coaching, you talked about, um, you know, everything that you've done, you talked about family. I, what I really want to drive into is, um, and we kind of touched on it, because you have clients and you're working with people and because you've built a big team before, you know, what is the biggest mistake that you see a lot of entrepreneurs do that creates just massive amounts of mental stress and anxiety? Oh my God, there's a list. <laughs> I mean, 
because I was guilty of all these things. So, I mean, I mean, speaking even what I've seen, but also what I've gone through is not, not honoring your schedule, your calendar. Like that is such a, it's, it's really like scary. I mean, when I look back, I'm like, oh my God, I waste, like I, there was probably an entire year at one point where like the needle was not moving at all. It was like stat, I was plateaued everything. And I, when I really think about, well, it's not me cause I'm, cause I'm awesome. So like, who wouldn't want to work with me? Duh. So it wasn't me. And I was friendly and I was approachable and I did the things, but I was again, and this goes back to why I'm like, I want people to not be so like, feel like a slave to their devices and to their business. Um, so I think one of the biggest, you know, issues is that people do not they either, they either don't even have a calendar at all where they don't operate appointment by appointment or time slot by time slot, but they don't even honor it. And then the other part is like, well, they do have it. They don't honor it. So for example, modern social media, it's what I teach. It's what I love. If you're aimlessly on Facebook and you have no, not only do you not have a plan when you're on there, but you also get on there and you think you're working, but you're scro- there's an hour and a half went by when it should have been 20 minutes total. And you should have had an exact game plan on there. And I think people are just like clueless. Well, like I, I'm just, they're guessing it and they're winging it. And that's not, that's not, you're not really stepping into a business owner position or a CEO mindset. You know, you're not operating like a business, right? So I think not having, it's not even about the skills. It's about the discipline and having the honoring of the calendar and the schedule that you're going to create for yourself. Um, so that's, I might be one of the, honestly, one of the biggest things, um, because time is money, right? We all know, and you got to be using it correctly. I think another thing is people get so distracted with the new shiny object, meaning like, uh, you know, clubhouse came up and now TikTok. And the reality is like, that's never going to change. There's always going to be the next new hottest, greatest, best thing. Um, and when you try to be a jack of all trade master of none, well, it happens, right? So I just, I'm a big believer in, uh, mastering your craft and always, and that's why I love teaching what I teach because I'm always like, Hey, you might not know this. You should learn it though. Because mm-hmm. even if you, if I, you eat the meat, spit out the bones, if you take like 10% of what I show you, you, you will have better results, period. It doesn't, you don't need to put all hundred percent of it. So the time commitment that people neglect or don't, they're not strict with the distraction, the attention dispersion where they're like, Oh my God, I don't, I don't know where to go or what to do. And then they just hot mess <laughs> all over the place. Hot mess. Yeah. Uh, hot mess. <laughs> um, and then also again, very guilty. I was very guilty of this is stay in your own lane. Like, why are you comparing? Why are you looking at Susie Q over here when you have no idea what she went through to get where she was? Well, you have no idea. So I think, again, I could probably talk your ear off on this one subject. Cause there's a million things that I see that people do. And I'm just like, Oh man, like you're slowing yourself down. Like it's so it's upsetting. And then that's why what so many people quit. And it's like, gosh, darn it. Like if you, if you just like squashed all these limiting beliefs and all these distractions and all these other things, you'd be a rock star, but you're not going to do it because you're not disciplined and you don't have the right direction. Maybe you don't have the right coaching and yada, yada, yada. So I, I, I think those three, what I say, two or three things, I don't know. Those are probably the biggest, most common and frequent ones that I see messing with people, you know? Uh, those are good ones. Those are really, really, I honor my calendar. I use a two, three, two method that I created inside our group. And we, we, we use the two, three, two method. And, you know, I have three different jobs that I do. Plus I'm a, a husband and a father. So yeah. You know, and my partner has 10 kids. So, you know, don't think that, you know, we're special or, you know, we have some special calendar thing that we fix. No, we just put what's on the calendar and we honor it. That was just, that's just huge. The honoring the calendar, honoring the calendar. So I'm going to ask you two more questions. One is like a super, a super cool one, but the second one, you just kind of talked about it. You know, there's a lot of coaches out there right now. They're, they're doing a lot of coaching and, and coaching is, is become like 2020 has just turn coaching into something that's been amazing and Mm -hmm. not so amazing so what would you like what would you tell an MLMer that's you know let's just say because I I kind of got the feeling of your your ideal avatar guys making guy or gals making a you know five three to five thousand dollars a month you know so he's he's kind of stable in a good network marketing company that's what he's grossing that's not what he's like that's not ad spend, all that other stuff, yep. because they always talk about what they add, what they gross, what the check was, not what you actually spent to, be, to get that check. <laughs> yep. So um, that person, um, what do you, what do you tell that person that says, you know what, maybe you're in the wrong rooms, 
Maybe you need a coach. Maybe, you know, maybe I just have a suggestion that maybe, you know, a co- you might want to seek outside coaching from your MLM. What do you, how do you, how do you talk to that person? Because, you know, he's already kind of successful. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. he's in that rut that, that you talked about where you're just kind of stagnant running and running and running. And I found that like, once you get a coach, it's an amazing, amazing, things just start to happen so much faster. What do you, what do you tell that guy? that's like guy or gal. It's like, I think you might, I would suggest a coach, but how do you tell them that, tell it to them? Like, I think you need a coach. I, so I'm a big believer. Like I am chatty Kathy over here. I can talk, talk, talk. But when it comes to, when it comes, I'm poking fun at myself because you got to, but it's the truth. If anyone that knows me will tell you like, oh, she can go energizer bunny. Here she goes. But I, what I've learned is especially through not, not even actually before I was even coaching because mm-hmm. I actually coached my first experience coaching, believe it or not, was um, one of the top network very I won't name drop but one of the top everybody knows the name but uh fit, big MLM trainers out there mm-hmm. like industry generic you know industry trainers I was his uh an accountability coach for hit with his coaching program for about two years and mm-hmm. I learned so much about not only just all these different companies and and it was great it was a great experience but what I learned is like listening it's shut up say nothing and just listen and pick up on cues so the, to answer your question like what would I say to somebody? It honestly would, it would depend on what I'm hearing, like where, where their struggle is. But in general, I mean, I would, I would put the, put the question back on them and say, look, you're obviously successful. You obviously know what you're doing, right? You you've clearly made something of yourself. You've done really well. The question is, are you happy staying here? Or, and have you, what's, what's your growth been like the last six months? Cause if it's, if you're telling me, or the, even the last year, if you're telling me it's, so you're stuck at 5k a month, 3k a month, whatever it is. And I, I, when I say stuck, I mean, that's a nice chunk of money. That's great. There's nothing to sneeze over, but if you had bigger goals and you're staying here, I am a big believer. Like I have different coaches and mentors in my life for all different areas. Right. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I'm a huge believer. I, when I invest in something, it always has a crazy ROI because not only I'm putting my money where my wait, my money where my mouth is. Yes. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm paying for it, which means I'm going to pay. I, when you pay, you pay attention. I when say that pay, all the time. I say that right. all the time. <laughs> yeah. Because it's true. You know, here's the funny thing. Like the first couple of coaches I got too, and I know I'm going a tangent here for a second, but I was like, wait a minute. I already like knew this information, but it, but it still worked. I still did. I got results. And I was like, at the end of it, I'm like, so I just paid. And I already knew that but I, I just rank advantage or I just, you know, I climbed the lie. I, I got more successful. So why is that? And it's the accountability. It's the fact that you're paying, you're investing in yourself and you take that much more seriously than a free coach. And so to somebody in MLM, I would say to look, look at where you've been. Where do you want to go? Have you been able to get there? If the answer is no, you a hundred percent want to coach. What's really powerful about a coach who's not in your upline, who's not in your company, um, you know, an outside coach it's always so much more powerful than, and I'm not coming down, but some uplines, amazing mentors for people and great coaches. And so, and that's amazing. If you have that, like absolutely plug on in, have build that good relationship. But when you have a coach that's outside of all that, they're like going to give it to you. There's no, there's no emotional, you know, like they don't have anything to gain. They're not trying. So they're going to tell you something in a completely different way. And I also think, you know, when somebody is a little bit more removed, you're getting a whole nother perspective, which for me, that was invaluable because I, I, th- again, that's what kind of shifted and, and helped me learn more offer creation and automation and all these things that I was like, huh, my upline would have never told me that. Cause they don't, they don't teach that, you know, they mm-hmm. teach you how to win in your company specifically and whatever their system is. Again, it's usually contacting, inviting and showing the, you know, the stuff that you have and following up and that's it. It's where that's where it ends. So you can, you can say that you can only say that so many ways, mm-hmm. but you're going to hear that same thing all the time. So what's the definition of insanity? You do the same thing over and over and you get no results. So if you're stuck somewhere, I just say, just take a serious look. I mean, and also there's so many coaches, like you said, to your point, so many out there, which is actually great because I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I'm a shot of whiskey, right? I'm not going to, I'm not going to be for everybody and that's okay. But you, you just have, there's so many 
people and experts and, and people that you can trust that you can go to that really can help you break through. I, I really never knew how much I believed in coaching until I don't, it was kind of recent. I mean, the last couple of years and I, and I was like, oh my God, where has this been all of my life? Because I love my team. I love my upline. I love my company, amazing people, but I, I truly don't believe I would have been able to progress and get where I wanted to go and also evolve as an entrepreneur as a whole, right. Without seeking outside coaching. So I, I think I would just say that not all that, of course, I would listen more than I would talk to this person. But, um, Again, I would just constantly ask those questions instead of telling them why they need a coach, ask right. them the questions that kind of make them go, oh, you know what? I think I need a coach. <laughs> so right. yeah. when they say, so I, I read a great book, it's called um, Never Split the Difference. And he said that there's, there's three rights. There's your right, which means get off my back. And the right that you're looking for is that's right. And if you can get a that's right, you've got a buy-in from them. Oh, I love that. That's good. So yeah, that's that's that book is phenomenal. I'm um, gonna check it out. I don't know that one. Yeah, I'll send you the link. But uh, sure. the last question I have, and I, I was prepping you for this one a little bit, but <laughs> I want you to think about this. I mean, I, I've stalked your Facebook page a little bit and noticed that you've been on stage a couple times. So what I want you to do is I want you to picture this in your head. Twenty, you're the Sunday speaker. Meaning in every poster, you're the one in the front. So imagine this 20,000 people inside whatever, it's marketing, it's you know, Funnel Hacking Live, it's 10X, it's whatever it is, you're the Sunday speaker. And you just get done delivering your 40 minute talk. And Sunday speaker is usually not a pitch, it's more of a talk, more of like I'm rallying to get everybody to go do something. I want to remember who she is. When everybody stands up and you drop the mic and they're walking out the, out the stadium and they see your image as they walk out, what's the one phrase you want them to remember? Jen Powers mic. What's the one word or phrase that I want them to remember when they leave mm -hmm. after my... Well, so I'm a huge fan of my last name. So I would say powerful because I want, when I leave a room, that's powerful, not in an ego way, powerful, like, I, like Again, an empowerment way almost. Yes. Because I, there's so many times, like I, I, I value anybody that gives me their time, whether they're paying for it or I'm giving it to them or whatever. I want to make sure anybody that leaves a room that I speak from or spends time on the phone or whatever it is with me, they leave it better than before they came in. I think that's most people's goal. But if I'm going to give a talk, I want mouths, not, not mouths to drop, but I want them to be like goosebumps. Like that was so powerful. Like I, that hit me hard. Like that, that hit me and my pulled at my heartstrings that, that, and then it's going to lead to transformation or a change in the inside of that person and their business and their life, whatever it is. I just think um, too many times people, we, we go to listen to speakers and talks and you don't really, I mean, they're like, eh, you know, they're okay. I, I would like to think that when I speak, somebody, or the people in the audience are like, holy S-H-I-T, that was dope. That was great. Like I am going to, like my life's going to change, you know, like a Tony Robbins thing. I mean, you go to his and you're like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. My life's yeah, like, great. I'm either crying or I'm jumping on a stage. Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. I, I think, I mean, you literally, I, I could probably have thought of a better word, but I do love my last name. So a play on that power is powerful. I think that works. So. No, I like that. that that's, <laughs> money. that's definitely money. So is, so thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you spending the time with us today and uh, um, guys, make sure you listen to the full outro. I'll be giving something away. I always give something away, but also take a look at the show notes because I'm going to drop a couple of links to link to Jen. So that way you can get to know her a little bit better. Also, she does, she has this really good PDF that I'm, I'm going to try my best to twist her arm to let us put that in the show notes so you can define <laughs> your avatar. So uh, any last words for the audience? Um, well, I want to thank you guys for spending all this time and listening to me and, um, hopefully you got value. I would say to anyone listening, like, you know, it don't, it's, I don't want to, you know, you don't want to be cheesy and like cliche, like everybody like don't quit, but it's not even about quitting or not quitting. 
I just constantly be seeking information and questioning things. This is my biggest thing. Don't ever settle for good, like good because good is the enemy of great, right? And so if you are in a great place and you're making momentum happen and you're having success, be like grateful. I, I always like, you know, gratitude all the way, but stop and think like, okay, am I growing at the speed I want? Am I, I just ask questions. I want, I think people need to be much more inquisitive internally, like look within themselves, but also externally looking at the metrics and looking at their business and going, okay, what's working and what's not, what can I improve? What can I make better? How can I, instead of just being complacent and keeping things status quo, it's, it's this trap, the complacency trap that I see so many times. And it's, it's sometimes hidden in small little wins of success that you think, oh, okay, so I'm doing something right. When in reality, like a little win, that dopamine hit, you're like, oh, cool, sweet, I'm doing great. But you're not doing as great as you actually could be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't say that in a whole like never be satisfied kind of way. It's just go constantly. I, I mean, every single week, I look at the numbers, I look at wh how, where I spent my time the most, and I'm always asking myself, what was, what was a great win? Like what was good this week and what can I improve? What is not working and what, you know, can anything be made better? If it can, I got to I got to tackle that the next week. You know, I don't, I don't ever let success get to my head or like make me confuse, like make me think that, okay, because I'm doing well, I, then everything's, everything must be going great. I never actually think that I'm always thinking like, okay, great. Grateful for that. Amazing. Um, but is this, am I working as efficiently and effectively as I could be. That's, that's the biggest thing. So that's a big nugget. Like I always tell people that, you know, don't sit at the table of success too long. And the finish line is always the new starting line. So like, and good to great, it. good to great. I mean, like, good is the enemy of great. It is. Yeah, it is. If you're good, complacent, look around you, just look around at, at a lot of the people that are good. Yeah. And, and like, great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're good before you're great. You're great before you're spectacular, you're spectacular before you're extraordinary. Like we all know that. And I think, um, also be very, very observant with who is at your table. Who are you spending your time with? That is the hugest. When I see people comparing left and right, it's like, you're, you're look, looking in all the wrong places right now. Right. First of all, like, you know, you, you are the five people you hang around. We all know that, but that's not just true physically, like we are all online. Okay. The world's been kind of crazy the last year, but even before that, like we are all online. Who are you really focused in on and honed in on? Are they empowering you and making you better and making you bringing you more, you know, helping your business in some way? Or are you just like, you know, these are just like Joe Schmoes that I'm just, I've got used to. And they're like, you know what I mean? So I, um, yeah, I think be very observant. People need to like, look at every single little thing instead of just like, oh, this big picture and there's small wins and so I'm winning and everything's good. No, like go like nitty gritty, like deep dive into things. 100%. That's, that's huge. The, the five people that you hang out with. I always say this, like ask better questions to yes. better people to get better answers. It's not I just ask that. better questions. It's you've got to ask the questions to the right people because if you ask questions to the wrong people, then they're just going to validate, oh yeah, yeah, that's terrible too. Or that's this, they're not giving you the advice to make you stretch. So 100%. Thank you. Thank you 100%. It was, it was a, this was a fun interview. Hopefully we can get you back on soon. And uh, guys, like I said, always remember to listen to the full outro and we will see you on the next episode of Burnt Phone Marketing Radio. Thanks guys. Thanks. Are you tired of those lame Facebook groups that provide no value? Well, our Facebook group is awesome. Go to unlockthefbgroup.com and get access to our Facebook group where you will be able to find interviews of top network marketers and Q&As where you can jump in and talk to them live. We also have massive training. We provide a bunch of free tools. So jump into that group. Again, that's unlock the fbgroup.com will ask you a few questions in mini chat because that's what we do and make sure that you're not a spammer and get you into the group right away so again go to unlock the fbgroup.com and don't be a spammer